Hey, what's going on rocket powered sound designers in today's video We're gonna be taking a look at how to make some beautiful beautiful serum bells and this is what they sound like Are those not beautiful serum bells? Are they not? Please tell me if they're not because I know they are. So don't even say, don't even try and lie about that. <laughs> Anyways, all jokes aside, uh, if you like that sound, just support the video by dropping a like. That's all you have to do. Just drop a like on the video. And if you're new here, slap that subscribe button. Don't click it, slap it. Because I can personally guarantee you Tutorials. <laughs> okay, guys, enough with the jokes. I'm too goofy today. Now, we're going to start off with actually a pretty vocal waveform, I know. Pretty surprising when we're dealing with bells. Uh, we got a Monster 5. So, pull up Monster 5, and immediately, this is what we get. And that's the sound. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, that was not too funny either. Okay, Shane, you need to stop with the jokes. Uh, let's go turn on a sync, and we're going to take a listen to what this sounds like. As we start to turn up the sync, you're going to notice more and more cycles of the waveform are being introduced into a single cycle. So it's like, what the hell? What are we doing here? We're turning up the octave more and more. So each percent, we get to 2% on the dot, if that's possible. Uh, we can't get to 2% on the dot, but right about there is just about 2%, and that's almost exactly two cycles in one cycle, which is going to bring up the octave one, up one. Now that goes apply, that applies to, um, it's about here when we get to three, that's up two, which we want it at about four. Now this is where it's completely up to you, because um, in the sync, it's very, very subjective to where you put the knob because you can get a completely different tone from just putting it over like 1%. So, see what I mean? So, we can leave it around 4.11% here uh, and we'll just deal with that later and kind of see what where the sound brings us, right? So, next, we're going to be kicking into basic shapes which can be found in analog. And we're gonna put on our triangle waveform, just a classic triangle. Now, interesting thing that we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna be putting on our pulse width modulation. And basically we're just gonna be scrunching this up all the way to the left hand side. And if you guys take a listen to what that sounds like. Oops, wrong knob. It's the classic. PWM, pulse width modulation sound. And we're cutting out a lot of the high, or out of the, a lot of the low end, I'm sorry. And it creates like a retro kind of style sound here. It sounds pretty cool. Um, now, the reason that we're gonna be doing that as well is we're gonna be dropping this down one octave. So as opposed to the Monster 5 that is up around what, three octaves right here? This one's going to be down one, and we need to compensate for that. And, you know, this isn't just the reason why, but uh, we want to cut out a little bit, bit of the lower end. So we're going to be using that PWM to cut out the lower end. Ha <laughs> ha. Shane the Rhyming Master strikes again. Second video row, baby. Woo! Okay. Into the filter. We're going to be putting on our flangers. All right, into the flangers folder. I'm sorry. And let's find our flanger... HL6 positive. Well, there we go. Turn up that resonance. And guys, we don't want this turned on for just oscillator A. We want this to be turned on for oscillator A and B. Now, you guys are gonna freak once we're done with this filter and you guys hear the before and after. Now, we're also gonna wanna turn on the filter variation all the way up. And as we start to play some notes, you're going to notice, ew, that actually sounds disgusting. It sounds really like inharmonic on some notes and other notes. It sounds okay. But like, why are we even doing this? Now, stay with me. We're going to stick on that keyboard tracking. All you have to do, press that button, make sure that's blue. And now the filter cutoff is going to move with whatever note that we are pressing on the keyboard. Take a listen. Listen. 
it just creates a brand new tone for the sound. So let's start to move the cutoff down and try to find our tone. I like that, I like that spot right there. So for those of you that need the reference, it's 649 hertz, perfect. And now that's going to take us straight into the effects section. Now, before we do that, guys, you can put on a little bit of release because, you know, why not? We need a little bit of release on the sound. So, first thing on the list, we're gonna turn on our filter. Put that filter all the way to the top because the filter is gonna be first in line of all the other effects. And we're just gonna leave it on our low pass, our low six. So, let's do a low pass filter. And we're gonna stick on our low frequency oscillator number one, <laughs> you could use whatever one you want because we're only using one L LFO here. And we're gonna put this down to about like 20 Hertz, pretty low here. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is creating like a nice um, sawtooth ramp. So take a listen, do as so, move the cutoff down. So we're starting off at a high cut, oh, I'm sorry, sawtooth. We're starting off at a high LFO or at a high cutoff and we start to move down. And that's gonna be our plucky sound. Oh, we need a little bit of resonance. And also we're gonna put this on envelope. That way, every time a note is pressed, it goes boom, triggers it. And it's like, okay, we're going to pre we're gonna start this low frequency oscillator. Every time a note is pressed, it's like, oh, I get the MIDI input. Now we're gonna activate this parameter. But the cool thing is, once we, the thing on envelope, instead of trigger, trigger's gonna have it repeating over and over. If we put on envelope, it's just gonna go all the way down here and then continue at that 0% ramp. It's not even 0% ramp because I don't think you could have a ramp at 0%, it's just a 0% flat line after that. Okay. So you guys can see where we're going with this, right? Um, compressor and we're gonna slap on multiband, of course, every single time. I know, but the multiband is so powerful if you know how to use it. Um, so let's just take a listen to what we have so far. We're gonna be using this multiband turn up the gain. Turn on that master now. Now, since we are we have a little bit of release here, we do want to turn up the release on the multiband compressor. Because one of the things that the multiband is a little bit annoying for, this is what I mean when you use it correctly. So when we when we're working with volumes that are lower, so say say you're modulating the amp or something on on like one of your oscillators, and as you get closer down to the low vo um, volume level, the multiband compressor says, "Oh wow, this level is too low. We need to bring up this volume." So then it automatically compensates for that and brings up the volume. We don't want that uh, when we're working with um, a release, especially here. No, it, it works good when you're working in basses and stuff, but when we're just want the release, we're gonna turn up the release on that so it takes a little bit longer for it, um, it actually to get that point. Okay, pretty cool. Now, next on the list, we're gonna turn on our hyper slash dimension. Turn on that hyper just a tad bit. And the size, if you guys watch my tutorials, tutorials, yeah, my tutorials, <laughs> you guys already know what's uh, good with the size. Turn up the mix and the size too much. Oh my lord, that sounds disgusting. So we wanna drop that size down to about 3%. And that mix, not around 100, but something like around 50%. I should do. See right there, that works good. Now, reverb. Oh, and of course, delay. We could put on a little delay. Now, here's back to what I was talking about, when we could adjust every minute little detail to make it to our liking.
Like I said, guys, there's so many things that you can do. Ooh, I'm onto something here. That sounds really cool. Alright guys, well, I got a little bit off track, tr uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a little off track there for a moment, but um, yeah, you guys know what's up, that's a really cool tutorial, if you like the tutorial, t -t -t tutorial, oh my gosh, t -t 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 <laughs> okay, if you guys, I, I don't actually start it like that, I was just kidding, but um, uh, I'm out of control.